fluids it is in its most fundamental form the description of the motion of a fluid involves the study of behavior of all the randomly moving discrete molecules which make up the fluid fortunately in liquids analysis by molecular theory is not necessary for our purpose because the inter strong intermolecular cohesive forces compel the fluid to behave as a continuous mass of substance in gas since the molecular motion is varied and the quantity of molecules is large so it is convenient to avoid the difficult molecular analysis of the fluid by considering the average effect of all the molecules within the gas this can only be done with any degree of accuracy if the molecular density is high enough so that the gas can be treated as a continuous mass of fluid therefore knowledge and understanding knowledge and understanding of the basic principle and concepts of fluid mechanics are essential in the analysis and design of any system in which a fluid is working media so the design of all types of fluids machinery including pumps fans blowers compressors and turbines clearly required a knowledge of the basic principle of fluid dynamics what is fluid so a substance which is capable of flowing and deform continuously under the action of sharing stress is called fluid there are two basic types of fluids of matter one is liquid and another is gas like water honey juice air etc these are fluid one is viscosity density pressure is specific volume is specific with weight and many more so what is the viscosity viscosity which resists the flow in simple form we can say that it resist it applies some resistance to the capacity of flow viscosity it is the property of fluid which offers sufficient resistance to the movement of one layer of fluid over another adjacent layer of fluid top layer causes a shear stress on the adjacent layer while the lower layer causes a shear stress on the adjacent top layer so the viscosity is a measure of internal fluid friction which causes resistance to flow it is primarily due to cohesion and molecular momentum exchange between fluid layers and as flow occurs these effects appear shearing stress shearing stress is the kind of resistant type flow which applies between the moving layers of fluid in general an ideal fluid has no nature which can be classified as a perfectly ideal fluid however the fluid with little viscosity are sometimes considered as ideal fluids these are the some fluid types and viscosities are given honey is viscosity is, uh, viscosity is 12200 cps it is comes under the highly viscous fluid density definition of density is almost already clear to all of you but i am just discussing some basic properties so density comes under the basic property of the fluid density is defined as the mass of a unit volume of a material substance and it can be defined as d is equal to m upon v where d is density m is the mass and v is volume in gas particles are are less dense while in solid they are more dense so it is commonly expressed in unit of grams per cubic meter suppose the density of water is 1 gram per cubic centimeter and earth density is 5.51 grams per cubic centimeter it is a measure density can also be expressed as a kilograms per cubic meter in mkg or si units right now this is the example for this gas liquid and solid uh, solid particles are more dense pressure again it is the basic property which comes under the fluid flow pressure p is equal to in general we say that p equals to force per unit area or it is p is equal to thrust by area and the si unit is pascal which is equal to n per meter square newton per meter square specific volume a specific volume is defined as the number of cubic meters occupied by 1 kg occupied by 1 kg of matter it is the ratio of a material's volume to its mass which is the same as the reciprocal of its density in other words specific volume is inversely proportional matter but it is most often used in calculation involving gases so the standard unit for specific volume is cubic meter per kilogram that is meter cube per kg 
and it may be expressed in terms of milliliters per gram or cubic feet per pound specific weight it is also known as the unit weight or weight per unit volume of a material commonly used value is the specific weight of water on earth at 4 degree centigrade which is 9.807 kn per meter cube next the major part of this vis uh, viscosity which is newton's law of viscosity all fluids obey or disobey this newton's law of motion in general it can be written as tau is equal to mu del u by del y raised to power n so this raised to power n decides that the fluid is newtonian or no newtonian right so this newton's law of viscosity is viscosity of a fluid is due to cohesion and interaction between particles when two layers of fluid at a distance dy apart move one over the other at different velocities say u and u plus du the viscosity together with the relative velocity causes a shear stress acting between the fluid layers the top layer causes a shear stress on the adjacent lower layer while the lower layer causes a shear stress on the adjacent top layer so this shear stress is proportional to the rate of change of velocity that is tau proportional to du by dy where tau is shear stress and mu is the coefficient of viscosity tau equals to mu du by dy and this du by dy is equal to velocity gradient so types of fluids in world there are two types of fluids one is ideal fluid that is imaginary fluid and another is real fluid ideal fluid means the viscosity is zero real fluid so real fluid again classify two types of fluid newtonian fluid and non newtonian fluid if i am saying that this newton's law of motion is tau equals to mu del u by del y raised to power n suppose this n equals to 1 which is given in this newton's law of viscosity this n equals to 1 that means tau equals to mu del u by del y then fluid is known as newtonian fluid right and when n not equals to 1 and may be greater than 1 or may be less than 1 then fluids comes under the category of this non newtonian fluid so newtonian fluid when n equals to 1 that means shear stress is directly proportional to the shear rate these fluids i am uh, i am uh, delivering about this newtonian fluid so these fluids have a constant velocity across all the shear rates and include many of the most common fluids such as water most aqueous solution air and other gases while this holds true for relatively low shear rates at high rates most oils in reality also behave in a non newtonian fashion and thin typical examples include oil pens in automotive engine shell bearings and to a lesser extent in geared tooth contacts so these type of fluids obey newton's law of viscosity like water oil gasoline alcohol and even glycerin non newtonian fluids that means tau is equal to mu del u by del y raised to power n so all those fluids for which the flow curve is not linear here one is straight line coming from origin this is straight line y equals to mx this is graph for this newtonian fluid that means there is a linear relationship but while whether uh, where bingham plastic fluid pseudo plastic fluid dilatant fluid here shear stress to is not directly proportional to shear rate this is these all kinds of non newtonian fluids so these materials are commonly divided into three broad groups one is time dependent fluid time independent fluid and a visco elastic fluid or maxwell fluid or power line fluid time dependent fluid non newtonian fluid are classified into three types time dependent fluid time independent fluid and visco elastic fluid so time dependent fluid are those for which the shear rate is a function of both the magnitude and the duration for shear and possibly of the time lapse between consecutive application of shear stress these are again of two types thixotropic fluid and rheopactic fluid again come to this time independent fluid 
so time independent fluid are those for which the rate of shear at a given point is slowly dependent upon the instantaneous shear stress at that point these are of three types pseudo plastic or we can say that shear thinning fluid caisson fluid and williamson fluid are comes under this category dilatant fluid that is shear thickening fluid and third one is binger plastic fluid and last category for this non newtonian fluid is viscoelastic fluid viscoelastic fluid are those that show par partial elastic recovery upon the removal of a deforming shear stress such material possesses properties of both fluids and elastic solids so fluids and elastic solids both are comes under this category now i am discussing about the time dependent non newtonian fluids again and i'm saying that non newtonian fluids are of three types time dependent time independent and viscoelastic time dependent fluids are again of two types thixotropic fluid and rheopactic fluid so thixotropic fluids are it is a time dependent shear thinning property thixotropic is a time dependent shear thinning property it is a fluid which takes a finite time to attain equilibrium viscosity when introduced to a step change in shear stress like gelatin shortening creams gels and castor oils are examples for thixotropic fluids rheopactic fluid is very similar to dilatant fluid in that when shear is applied viscosity increases the difference here is that increased vis viscosity is time dependent examples are gypsum paste printer inks and lubricants time independent non newtonian fluids first one is pseudo plastic fluid it is a time independent shear thinning property of fluids the viscosity of this fluids will decrease with, with increased shear rate like ketchup greases starch suspension and quicksan etc dilatant fluids are it is a time independent shear thickening property of fluids the viscosity of these fluids will increase with increased shear rate and a good example of this dilatant fluid is suspension of cold starch in water if such a suspension is compressed quickly by hand the suspension will turn almost to solid if releasing the pressure the suspension will flow freely again so this corn starch is the best example for this dilatant type fluid binger plastic fluids binger plastic is a viscoplastic material that behaves as a rigid body at low stress as a viscous fluid at high stress due to particles in material having weak bonds that can be broken allowing material to flow yet when its stress is gone the bonds form again that is tooth like toothpaste and mayonnaise viscoelastic fluid or maxwell fluid or power bearing fluid these are types of non newtonian fluids formed by viscous component and an elastic one like saliva behave more like an elastic body than like water saliva is another best example for this viscoelastic fluid again there are two terms one is streamline and second is path line so streamlines is the imaginary line drawn in a body of moving fluid in such a way that the tangent to any point in the line gives the direction of motion of the fluid that is known as streamline and path line is simple as clear by its name that is the path followed by a moving fluid particle is called a path line the path line shows the direction of a fluid particle for a given period of time or between two given sections types of fluid flow so various types of flow behavior occurs one is steady flow unsteady flow rotational flow irrotational flow laminar flow non laminar flow compressible flow these are various types of fluid flow so steady flow is what in simple language when motion is independent of time then it is known as steady flow so if flow is said to be steady if mass rate of flow of fluid is constant at any section in the path of the path of the flow of the fluid we can say that the flow is said to be steady if any point in the fluid the fluid characteristics such as velocity temperature pressure density behavior of the fluid in motion are independent of time like when an incompressible fluid or liquid flow through a pipeline that is the example of steady flow 
unsteady flow flow is said to be unsteady if mass rate of flow of a fluid is different at different sections in the path of a flow of the fluid in other words we can say that the flow is said to be unsteady if at any point in the fluid the property means the time dependent flow example is compressible fluid compressible fluid that is like gas flow through a pipeline gas flow through a pipeline is the best example for this unsteady flow uniform flow by it is clear by its name that, that is the type of flow in which the velocity at given time does not change with respect to space example is liquid flow through a pipeline of uniform diameter is the example of uniform flow and non uniform flow when the liquid flow through a pipeline of variable diameter that means the flow is said to be non uniform if the velocity of flow of a fluid is different at different section in the path of the flow of the fluid so in the variable diameter pipe flow is uniform non uniform laminar flow or viscous flow a flow is said to be laminar flow or viscous flow or streamlined flow if each liquid particle has a definite path and the path of one particle does not cross the path of any other particle that means when a very highly viscous liquid such as muddy water flows at a very low velocity through a pipeline so this is the example for laminar flow non laminar flow or a turbulent flow just do not have a definite path and the path of one particle crosses the path of other particles during flow such as petrol flows through a pipeline then the flow of petrol is known as turbulent flow compressible flow that flow in which density of the fluid changes from point to point incompressible density of the fluid remains constant rotational flow in which the fluid particles while flowing along stream lines also rotate about their own axis irrotational flow is that flow in with own axis and last example of flow is this one dimensional flow 2d flow and 3d flow so one dimensional flow is the streamline flow of a fluid in which the flow can be represented by straight line when a streamline flow of a fluid occurs along a curve the flow is called two dimensional flow when a streamline flow of a fluid occurs such that its motion can be represented by three mutually perpendicular coordinate axes the flow is called three dimensional flow so these all about the types of flow next the types of forces present in a moving liquid inertia forces viscous force gravity force surface tension force and pressure force so inertia force when a liquid i am asking about this type of force so when a liquid is in motion some forces are always involved in the phenomena of flow but there are always one or two forces which dominate the other forces and they govern the flow of the liquid and keep in motion inertia force it is the product of mass and acceleration of flowing liquid and is always existing in the phenomena of the liquid flow that is f equals to ma is known as inertia force viscous force it is the product of shear stress although shear stress is the kind of resisting force but it is the product of shear stress due to viscosity and the cross sectional area of flow although this all are at the type of forces that means ma gravity force it is the product of mass and acceleration due to gravity of a flowing liquid next one is surface tension force it has it is the it is the product of surface tension per unit length and the length of the surface of flowing liquid last one is pressure force it is the product of intensity of pressure and the area of a flowing liquid so these all types of forces dominate each other next terminology come heat transfer so the laws which govern heat transmissions are very important to the engineers in the design construction testing and operation of heat exchange apparatus electrical engineers apply their knowledge of heat transfer 
for the design of cooling system for motors, generators, and transformers. Chemical engineers are concerned with the evaporation, condensation, heating, and cooling of fluids. An understanding of the laws of heat flow is important to the civil engineers in the construction of dams, design of buildings. The mechanical engineers deals with problems of heat transfer in the field of internal combustion engines, steam generation, refrigeration, and heating and ventilation. To estimate the cost, the feasibility and size of the equipment necessary to transfer a specified amount of heat in a given time. So a detailed heat transfer analysis must be made. What is the meaning of heat transfer? That is heat energy can be transferred from one body to the other or from one location in a body to the other or the transfer of heat is normally from a high temperature object. In thermodynamics, heat is defined as the energy that crosses the boundary of a system when this energy transport occurs due to a temperature difference between the system and its surroundings. The second law of thermodynamics states that heat always flows over the boundary of the system in the direction of falling temperature, that is from high temperature to low temperature. Then the heated fluid particles move to region of low temperature and meet and mix with cold fluid and transfer part of its energy by mixing motion. The energy stored in the fluid particles is carried as a result of their mass motion. This mode of energy transfer does not depend only upon the temperature difference. So strictly speaking, we cannot define this mode of energy transfer as heat transfer. All other factors are also included. However, the net effect is a transport of energy and it takes place in the direction of lower temperature gradient and named as heat transfer by convection. Hence, there are mainly three modes of heat transfer, conduction, convection, and radiation. So, conduction, convection, and radiation. Conduction. Conduction is the transfer of heat by direct contact, as shown is this above figure. As shown in this above figure, Convection is the flow of currents in a liquid or gases and radiation is transferred through space by electromagnetic waves. Conduction occurs most easily in solids. A current is created when the warmer material rises, forcing the cooler material to sink. That is, that comes under convection part. And radiation can occur in empty space as well as in solids, liquids and gases, right? So conductor substances that transfer thermal energy very well. Metals are comes under this part. Convection is a cycle in nature, responsible for most winds and ocean currents. And radiation waves such as visible light, infrared and ultraviolet light are forms of radiation. So these three are the major modes of heat transfer, conduction, convection, and radiation. Heat conversion. Convection is defined as the process of heat transfer by the combined action of heat conduction and mixing motion. If the fluid motion is set up by the vacancy effects resulting from density difference caused by temperature difference in the fluid, the heat transfer is said to be by free convection or natural convection. Free convection, that is natural convection. So these flows are driven by the vacancy effect due to the pre presence of gravitational acceleration and density variations from one fluid layer to another. Free convection flows are widely used in chemical engineering, hot steam radiator for heating a room, refrigeration coils, atomic power, cooling of electronic equipment, thermal storage system, aeronautics, and rocket engine cooling. Forced convection, if the motion is maintained by externally applied agency or externally applied pressure differences, as in the case of flow through pipe, we use the term forced convection. That means forced convection we apply from our side and free convection is from nature. The fluid is forced at a speed by a blower or pump. Mixed convection, that is the combination of both free and forced convection. So the phenomena of heat 
Gene transfer has been the object of extensive research due to its application in science and technology. Such phenomena are observed in biochemistry induced motions in the atmosphere, in bodies of water, quasi solid bodies such as earth and so on. Unsteady oscillatory pre convective flows plays an important role in chemical engineering, turbo machinery, and aerospace technology. Such flows arise due to either unsteady motion of a boundary or boundary temperature. Besides, unsteadiness may also be due to oscillatory free stream velocity or temperature. In nature and industrial applications, many transport processes exist where the transfer of heat takes place. Simultaneously, as a result of combined vacancy effects of thermal diffusion and diffusion of chemical species, in addition, the phenomena of heat transfer is also encountered in chemical process industry such as food processing and polymer production. So, till now, I am discussing about the types of fluids, forces present in fluid, fluids motion, and heat transfer. Next, come to this mass transfer part. These three are the major part of this fluid dynamics. One is velocity, second one is heat transfer, that is motion, temperature, and third one is mass transfer, that is concentration. So, mass transfer is the net movement of mass from one location to another. Mass transfer occurs in many processes such as absorption, evaporation, drying, precipita precipitation, membrane filtration, and distillation. Some common examples of mass transfer processes are the evaporation of water from a pond to the atmosphere, the purification of blood in the kidneys and liver, and the distillation of alcohol. So this picture shows the diffusion of liquids. First, one, when I'm putting some ink part in this water molecule, water molecule and dye molecule mix, and then after this, complete this water, uh, water part is concentrated through this dye molecule. Next is MHD flow. Magneto MHD, by name it is clear, magnetohydrodynamics. First, I'm discussing this MFD, that is magneto fluid dynamics, is the study of the motion of an electrically conducting fluid in the presence of a magnetic fluid. When the fluid is incompressible, such as liquid mercury and its other properties such as viscosity, thermal conductivity and electrical conductivity are regarded as constant. The word magneto hydrodynamics or hydromagnetic is used. The title magneto gas dynamics is selected for compressible fluids such as ionized gas, where its other physical properties are variable, especially temperature dependent, since especially temperature dependent. Since an ionized gas is often called at plasma, one uses the word plasma dynamics in place of MFT or MGT, that is in place of magneto fluid dynamics or magneto gas dynamics. It was observed by Faraday 1832 that due to the motion of electrically conducting fluid in a magnetic field, the electric currents are induced in the fluid, which produce their own magnetic field called induced magnetic field, and thus modify the original magnetic field. In addition to this, the induced currents interact with the magnetic field to produce electromagnetic forces, perturbing the original motion. So two important basic effects of magnetic fluid dynamics are the motion of the fluid affects the magnetic field and the magnetic field affects the motion of the fluid. Porous medium. So porous medium by name, it is clear that the material which contains pores. So a study of flow through porous medium has become basic to many applied scientific and engineering fields due to its importance and wide application in the field of petroleum industry, soil mechanics, groundwater hydrology, seepage of water in river beds, purification and filtration process, civil engineering and biochemical etc. In order to study the flow of fluids through porous media, it is important to clarify the terms that denote the two materials involved. That is, one is fluid and second one is porous. One must be tempted to define porous medium as the solid bodies that contain pores. However, it is unfortunately much more difficult to give an exact geometrical definition of what is mean by the notion of pore that may appear at first glance. A special effort is therefore required to obtain a proper description so pores are void spaces which must be distributed more or less 
frequently through the material then it is called porous so a porous medium usually consists of a large number of interconnected pores each of which for the study undertaken here is saturated with fluid then it is known as porous medium or flow through porous media the exact form of the structure however are usually complicated and differ from medium to medium it often takes one of two forms either an aggregate of a large number of particles such as sand or gravel or a solid containing many capillaries such as porous rock for example limestone or a sponge the flow of fluids through porous media is of great practical importance and has been extensively studied by musker shediger and beer the flow of viscous fluid through permeable materials has been of long standing interest for fluid dynamics in short sponge or gravel sand are the most suitable examples for this porous media these are the governing equation of fluid flow in porous media for the convective flow of a viscous incompressible fluid with constant fluid properties through a highly porous media v is the mean seepage velocity t is the time rho is the fluid density delta p is the pressure gradient mu is the viscosity of the fluid k is the permeability of the porous medium fi is external body forces t is the temperature kappa is thermal conductivity cp is the specific heat heat at constant pressure phi is the heat generated due to viscous dissipation and q is the heat due to external source or sinks now come to this equation part from which we solve this uh, uh, fluid flows uh, by calculating various parameter values of various parameter so basically there are four equations equation of state equation of continuity equation of motion and equation of energy so during last 50 years a large number of fluid of great commercial and technological importance have been found whose behavior cannot be explained by the solution of navier stokes equations and therefore a basic search into the foundation of fluid dynamics had to be undertaken the four fundamental equation are as conservation of mass conservation of momentum and conservation of energy these equations are in number in four but it is given that these are in four but actually these are six in numbers three for velocities one for temperature one for pressure and last one is for density so three for velocity v1 v2 v3 temperature pressure and the density which are the function of both space coordinates and times constitutive equation this is first equation that is equation of state p equals to rho rt for incompressible fluid rho equals to constant equation of continuity that is conservation of mass that is shown by this d rho, del rho by del t by diversion rho q bar equals to zero where rho equals to density q bar equals to velocity vector diversion rho q equals to convective term and del rho by del t is the represent the change in density due to unsteady ness third one is equation of motion the flow behavior is governed by the navier stokes equation of motion which are obtained from the second law of motion which states that the total forces acting on a fluid mass enclosed in an arbitrary volume fixed in space is equal to the time rate of change of linear momentum last one is the equation of energy that is conservation of energy so equation of energy based on the law of conservation of energy which requires that the difference in the rate of supply of energy to a volume fixed in space within a given surface and the rate at which this energy goes out through the surface must be equal to the net rate of increase of energy in that volume where rho is the density cp is specific heat del q by del t is the rate of heat generation per unit volume per unit time so these four are the measuring equation for this fluid flow next part is the non dimensional parameters so when we try to solve a research paper our first first we analysis a problem then we come to this navier stokes equation part then we turn into or convert it into this dimensionless analysis non dimensional parameters so two methods for finding out these parameters one is inspection analysis and another one is dimensional analysis these are some non dimensional parameters one is eckert number grashof number 
हार्टमन नंबर लोकल स्कैन फ्रैक्शन मॉडिफाइड ग्रेशर नंबर नसर नंबर पैरेंटल नंबर रेनॉल्ड्स नंबर नॉन डायमेंशनल पैरामीटर्स नाउ कम टू दिस फ्लो थ्रू वेरियस ज्योमेट्रीज देयर आर वेरियस टाइप्स ऑफ फ्लो मे बी फ्लो इन पैरेलल प्लेट्स मे बी थ्रू श्रिंकिंग शीट एक्सपेंडिंग शीट्स मे बी विद डिस्क विद सिलेंडर सो वेरियस टाइप्स ऑफ ज्योमेट्री अकर्स इन दिस फ्लो थ्रू प्रॉब्लम्स सो फर्स्ट वन इज लाइक प्लेन कुटी फ्लो प्लेन कुटी फ्लो और सिंपल शेयर फ्लो इज अ फ्लो बिटवीन टू पैरेलल प्लेट्स वन ऑफ व्हिच इज एट रेस्ट and another moving with a uniform velocity capital u in its own plane or pressure gradient is taken to be zero and the boundary condition r given like this for velocity it is u equals to u and for temperature when y equal to 0 t equal to t not and when y equal to h t equals to t1 this is plane poisley flow example of plane poisley flow so in plane poisley flow the pressure gradient is non zero but the plates are kept stationary so here flow is due to the presence of pressure gradient and boundary conditions are when y equals to h u equals to 0 when y equals to minus h that means velocity both velocity are zero at y equals to h and when y equals to minus h t equals to t not similarly when y equals to h again t equals to t not this is generalized plane kutty flow the flow is kutty flow non zero pressure gradient in this flow one plate is stationary and other is moving with uniform velocity u also here pressure gradient is present that is the basic difference between the this generalized plane kutty flow and kutty flow 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 over a stretching sheet with convective boundary conditions in presence of slip so in this type of flow consider a two dimensional steady hydrodynamic boundary rail flow with heat and mass transfer over a permeable uniformly moving plate placed in a saturated porous medium and the plane y equal to 0 of a cartesian coordinate system with the x axis along the surface of the plate the lower surface of the plate is heated by convection from a hot hot fluid at temperature tf to gives rise to a coefficient of heat transfer here at y equals to 0 u equals to l del u by del y this l del u by del y this term is known as slip And when y equal to zero minus k del t by del y is equal to h f t f minus t is known as convective boundary condition. Convection is here. Fluid flow over an inclined non-linear stretching sheet. Here I am discussing about this sheet which is inclined. So flow consider the steady and the orient uh, angle is zero to ninety degree to the vertical. The x-axis is directed along the continuous permeable stretching sheet. And the y-axis is measured down to the x-axis. Again, at y equals to zero, it is minus k del t by del y is equal to h f t w minus t. This is convection is here. Free convection is here. Fluid flow with velocity slip over an inclined non-linear stretching surface in non-Darcy porous medium. So two-dimensional boundary rail flow of a Cassin nano fluid is here over a non-linear slanted extending surface, and the conditions are. given at y equals to 0 and y equals to infinity y equals to infinity because it is a stretching surface flow of two immiscible fluids that means their densities are different so the flow of two immiscible fluids between two parallel faced horizontal plates under a constant pressure gradient the p equals to minus del v by del x the fluid with coefficient of viscosity mu n extend from y equals to minus s to y equals to 0 And with viscosity mu two, it extends from y equal to zero to y equal to h. So viscosities are different. Assuming the fluids they be constant density and the fluid to be steady unidirectional and depending on y, and the Navier-Stokes equations are given as under the below boundary conditions. These are the some basic for the slip and no slip conditions. Now come to this methodology part. How we can apply this basics of fluid dynamics in a research paper? So in fluid dynamics, however, one is not content with the formulation of the laws by which fluid movements are described, but makes an effort beyond that to find solution of flow problems for given initial and boundary conditions. To this end, following methods can be used in fluid mechanics to solve pro problems along with theory of fluid dynamics and analytical and numerical techniques. Some numerical techniques are RK four method with shooting technique, RK Felbach with shooting technique, 
Scalar box method, perturbation method, HM method that is homotopy analysis method, optimal homotopy method, and many more methods we can solve for this type of problems. Procedure for solving a research paper. First, we have to identify a problem, then analysis of the problem, mathematical formulation, solution of the problem with suitable techniques, and last one is the discussion of the result with suitable graphs. So to calculate the solution of the equation of continuity, Navier-Stokes equation of motion, the energy equation, and the species mass con concentration equation, which are in general non-linear partial differential equation, as I have described earlier, under suitable transformation, these equations are reduced to non-linear ordinary differential equation. These ordinary coupled non-linear differential equation of second or higher order are solved numerically by using the MATLAB software, by using suitable method, or we can use some other software like Mathematica we can also use, C programming we can also use. It gives fast and accurate solution to a wide range of problems. This software package is used extremely throughout industry, research, and education by users of a complete range of proficiency. The graphs are drawn with the help of MATLAB software for velocity component, temperature distribution, and concentration. From these graphs, the effect of various parameters on heat and mass transfer of the non-Newtonian or Newtonian fluid can be discussed. These are the description for this RK4 method and this is a shooting method which we can use in this RK4 method. Some softwares are given here like MATLAB, Mathematica, MAPL and many more. So the scope of this final study is the use of fluid dynamics is concerned with its application in industrial process and engineering design. The study of heat transfer effects of fluid flow through various regimes is important due to its many applications in science and engineering. It has application in absorption and iteration processes, chemical engineering, cooling.